All right, what's going on? So today we're back. Okay, that was the last that, like last episode was the last day with Blastoise, and I hate to see it go, but we had some good times with it. So you can't be too upset. Are we playing the? Anybody else notice something a little weird going on there? Uh, this is the first game I've ever played with this team, right? It's an old team from uh, Series 4. I, I modified it a little bit with some new stuff, but we're playing the exact mirror right away, right off the bat. I, I'm i speechless. I'm literally speechless. That's so, so weird that that would happen. Game 1 of the first episode. I mean, I know what I want to do, right? I've kind of teched for the Sun matchup with a Lumberry Togekiss and the Weakness Policy Tyranitar, but I don't actually know how this matchup goes. I think I want Torkoal Venu in the back, but I don't... This is so weird. They're almost in the same order, too. I mean, at least we both know that Charizard's the star of the show. I was, I was hoping we didn't get a battle so fast so I could give a little bit of an intro for the team, but we're jumping right into it. So, real quick, what we got this week... Well, not a week. I keep saying weekly like it's a new week or something. What we got these next couple of episodes is we're using a Charizard Venusaur team. Blastoise was used, and I felt bad that I left the other starters out. So I was like, you know what, we're going to use Sun. Sun's not that fun to watch, I gotta be honest, I understand. But we're bringing it back with the other two Gen 1 starters. Because, like, Blastoise already got its love. It's not Blastoise's turn anymore. Now it's time for Charizard and Venusaur to step up. Interesting enough, I didn't bring Charizard, but my opponent seems to think it is the right game plan. So honestly, we're going to follow me turn one, and I think we just max rock fall the Charizard. Like, what could go wrong? This is my game plan, is we follow me, we max rock fall the Charizard, and nothing can go wrong from that. Like, we get a knockout, we get the follow me redirecting with the Lumberry, so we'll be perfectly safe, and they're actually going to go Torkoal. Okay, so they switch in Torkoal for the Charizard. I mean, does it look like Torkoal takes the, the hit any better than the Charizard would have? I don't think so. So they're not Dynamax. Also, I got a new outfit on my trainer. For those who don't watch the stream, we had a thing, because I, I had not bought the DLC until yesterday. I had never played the DLC. I didn't really know that much about it. I knew about the new Pokemon. I generally try to stick to being a competitive player and not too much of just playing in the game. So I bought the DLC, got my character a new outfit, and here we are. I really like it. That was my one of my main incentives to buy the DLC, honestly, is the new clothes, which are really, really cool. Okay, so they do opt to Sleep Potter here, right? And what's cool about that is, like I said, we're going to be that Lumberry on Togekiss. So my opponent essentially wasted a turn here. Could we get the Rockfall off? This might even knock out Torkoal. I don't know. I'm not too sure. It just gets the one-hit knockout. Look, this is why, here's a word of advice. When you play a Sun Team, we do get a crit. Let's just say, even if we don't get that knockout, right? Word of advice, don't rely on your Sun Pokemon to win the mirror. Personally, I feel like whenever you use a Sun Team, you really need to, okay, the audio might be a little loud. I was testing some new audio. I'm so sorry if the audio has been loud. I'm turning it down slightly. Let me know, let me know in the comments. If somebody notices that the beginning audio is a little too loud, I'd be interested in hear what you think, because I'm not sure. I know when I stream, I want the audio to be a little quieter so I can interact with chat. But at the moment, when I am recording videos, I don't need to be the main center of attention. The battles can be some of what's going on too, obviously. So whatever you're thinking with the audio, I'd be very interested to hear what you guys are thinking. Um, but yeah, so we got new team. Uh, I don't feel like Charizard, Venusaur, Torkoal should ever be an answer to opposing sun. Mirrors are gross. And even though my opponent had the same six Pokemon as me, the just the way we're playing this matchup is so different. Like, my opponent thinks that Sun is the right way. Obviously, like I said, I know that the way you play this is to position your Togekiss with the Lumberry and your Dynamaxed Tyranitar on the field. And it's, it's dominating. As you can see right now, my opponent is yet to have a single answer. So we're going to follow me. It actually max guard with the Charizard. So look, I look like I have a gigantic brain right here. Because I attacked the Venusaur, as you're going to see coming up. But really, what I was doing is, 
I just don't want him spamming sleep powder. So he's gonna sleep powder again. We all know how it is. I, I, I personally, I don't know about you guys. I am never able to even hit one sleep powder when I need to, let alone two. So this guy hitting both of his sleep powders. Uh, my goal with the rock fall was to knock the Venusaur into sand range. Unfortunately, it looks like it's gonna. Oh no! It gets it gets knocked out. That looks perfect. I think that was like the exact number of HP that it needed to be knocked out there. So really cool stuff. We get rid of that Toge or not Togus. I'm I'm fumbling around a little bit. New team. I'm trying to remember. Last time we were using Blastoise, so now we're switching it up with this new strong Tyranitar Charizard core. I gotta get used to that. So we follow me. Redirect the Sleep Powder twice, and now we're up four to two in a really good spot. And they cannot even go for any cheeky stuff like a max guard anymore. So really what I'm thinking is if we go for the follow me, we're not going to wake up, right? We were just put to sleep. But we're going to follow me and max rock full Charizard. And I think my Venusaur in the back should be able to win this game. The worst thing that happens here is an Airstream into Togekiss and a Superpower into Tyranitar. But I feel like they're not going to be like a Life Orb on their uh, Tyranitar. So I want to say we take a superpower. Maybe. Hopefully. I'm not really sure. I don't know. If we take this, we win. We do take it. Dynamax Tyranitar, amazing Pokemon. One of my personal favorites. Like, Tyranitar is one of my favorite Pokemon to use. It's like top three at least to Dynamax, I gotta be honest. Using Tyranitar always makes me feel like I got a good, consistent team. So we get the rock fall off on Charizard, and like I said, I don't think my opponent had a chance, even from turn one. They hit all their sleep powders, I, I don't think I got too much crazy luck there. We did crit the Torkoal, but well, like I was saying, I don't really think the crit on Torkoal mattered. It was just uh, an extra turn for my opponent to click sleep powder there. So, very, very clean game. Our Dynamax ends, but it's definitely not going to matter, as I guess we yawn, just because, you know, what am I going to do, air slash? I'm not going to air slash here. So we're going to be yawning and stomping tantruming, as I think that my Venusaur should be able to clean this game up with a Leaf Storm in the back. Tyranitar actually hangs on from the Rock Slide, gets a stomping tantrum off. We're in weakness policy, and they're at minus one defense, so we're going to get that clean 4-0. Starting off this day strong, just like the doctor advised, okay? Knocking out all of our opponent's Pokemon, Keeping all of ours alive, you'll love to see it. You really do. That is the exact way uh, every battle should go. You know, you always feel like you should be winning every battle 4 out. So when it actually happens, it feels amazing. So this this is definitely off to a better start than the Blastoise team. The Blastoise team did not have a hot day one. This day one looking really clean though. I mean, we didn't get to showcase Charizard. The Venusaur didn't even hit the field. But right now we're still speaking of the consistency of this team here. The secondary mode... Most people hate Sun. Like I was saying, I really do think that Sun is an annoying team to face against, right? So seeing me play Sun probably isn't your favorite thing in the world. But the, my ability to shut down Sun with Togekiss and Tyranitar is something that I definitely want you guys to pay attention to. Because people are so frustrated by Sun, but I just full it with, with my two Pokemon, right? So if you really are struggling with Sun, something that I would recommend is trying to work a Togekiss and a Tyranitar onto a team somewhere. And then, like, you know, it, it, let's just say that they knocked me out with that superpower. If I had another Pokemon in the back that could then deal with the rest of their Pokemon, I'd be in a great spot. So if you're struggling with Sun, you think it's annoying, Lumberry or Safety Goggle. Safety Goggles is a good item on Togekiss, too. Plus a Tyranitar. Doesn't even have to be weakness policy. My weakness policy really never came into play. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend using those on any team you feel like you're struggling against uh, Sun with. So, interesting lead here. I'm going to go with Charizard and Venu. With Torkoal in the back. We're going to go Sun. We're going Sun with Togekiss in the back. Because I feel like Togekiss handles their Sun pretty well. So if I really need to, I can switch in my Togekiss. And be in an okay spot. Something that's interesting to note is I'm opting to run Wide Lens on my Venu, it's interesting. I don't know if Focus Sash or Wide Lens is better. Like I said, I am known famously for not hitting Sleep Powders. But at the same time, 
we're leading into this Cinderace right now, right? And it is threatening me with a one-hit knockout, which is not good. Uh, they could have a Trick Room mode here, where they go like Gothitelle Torkoal, but I don't think I'm too afraid of that. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to Airstream Cinderace right away and go for a Protect. I think this is just honestly probably the safest, most consistent method we can do here. They could fake out Venusaur. They could Airstream Venusaur. I don't feel like they're threatening my Charizard too much. So, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with that Cinderace. Because we both have Dynamax Fire types, and I gotta be honest, we both don't hit each other too hard. We really don't. So, we're going to kind of be trading little bits of damage back and forth to see who eventually comes out on top here. It's unfortunate, because for those who don't know about the, one of the new moves that was introduced in the Isle of Armor, uh, there's a new move called Burning Jealousy, right? And what Burning Jealousy does is it allows for you to do a, uh, I believe, 70 or 75 base power fire move that hits both of your opponent's Pokemon. And if it connects with them, which it will, because it's 100 accuracy, uh, obviously it can miss with some weird stuff going on, but if it connects and their stats raised that turn, they will be afflicted with a burn status, which is really cool. Because you know Cinderace, right? Cinderace usually likes to change its type. So if Cinderace goes for this max airstream like you're seeing right now, it's going to turn into a flying type and raise its speed. So funny thing, you actually get to burn the fire type Cinderace because it's not a fire type anymore. It's a flying type and it raised its stats. So Torkoal would have been really cool to lead off with here because in every situation, we get to burning Jealousy, the Cinderace, and burn it right away, which is really, really cool. Uh, like I said, we don't get to do that, obviously, as Torkoal's not on the field, but that's one of the cool things that I usually use to counter Cinderace. I wasn't sure my opponent would lead with it, so maybe I should have been a little more aggressive there with my Torko lead. I'm thinking we're going to max Wildfire here, and they're most likely going to get a knockout on my Vino, and I can't stop that. I'm going to Wildfire Gothitelle, and I'm going to Sleep Powder. Let's just Sleep Powder Gothitelle. Like I said, I'm pretty sure an Airstream is going to go off into my Venusaur, and there's Oh, the ally switch. Okay, dude. Hmm. The ally switch, which, like I said, I don't really think that matters too much. They airstream the Charizard? No way. We're going to look so galaxy brain here. We doubled Gothitelle, but now we're going to be firing a wildfire and a sleep powder into that Cinderace. So, this is a lesson to any new players. Don't just click ally switch, because sometimes it'll backfire so much. That Gothitelle could have helping handed. That Gothitelle could have psychicked my Venusaur to knock it out. There were so many better things that could happen there. And while I'm not going to say never click ally switch, you really need to consider when it's the right choice. Because right there, my opponent was probably like, what could go wrong? What could possibly go wrong if I click it? And right there is a perfect example of what could go wrong. They weren't ready for it. Uh, so, okay, so they weren't ready for it, and I ended up getting a really good double up on the Cinderace that they de they definitely didn't want. They were trying to make it so Cinderace took no damage, but realistically, they could have gotten so much more out of that turn. Um, anyways, so what I'm thinking here is we're going to max Wildfire Cinderace and Sleep Powder it. And you might be wondering, why would you double attack the Cinderace that it's almost knocked out and it's asleep? Well, if my opponent opted to ally switch again... We would get the Wildfire and the Sleep Powder now onto the Gothitelle, which would be a really, really cool play. But you're going to see right now, they did not ally switch, which you're probably like, oh, that's not good. But our Wildfire is going to knock that Cinderace out, and our Sleep Powder is going to be redirected into the Gothitelle slot. So no matter what happened, we were getting a Sleep Powder on the Gothitelle. So we were either knocking out the Cinderace and getting that Sleep Powder on Gothitelle, or... We were going to be getting a uh, damage on Gothitelle and a Sleep Powder on Gothitelle. And let's just say the one situation I haven't explained yet is uh, they do not... Wait, no. What's the other one? Oh, so let's say I didn't double target Cinderace, right? Let's say I wildfired Cinderace and Sleep Powdered Gothitelle, uh, which would be like the straightforward play. The reason you double Cinderace is because if I Sleep Powder Gothitelle and wildfire Cinderace, if they ally switch... I only get the Wildfire on Gothitelle, and the Sleep Powder fails into the Cinderace, and they get away with both their Pokemon. So that's why playing around an ally switch by double targeting a Pokemon like that is something you gotta think about. It's a little hard to come up with at first, but once you kinda 
get the feel for how it works, you'll really see that the application of it is not too bad. So they sent in Bisharp, which is a little weird, because I feel like I get another free sleep powder here. Now, usually, I would not be a fan of clicking sleep powder and clicking sleep powder and clicking sleep powder. I really don't like doing that. But with the wide lens item on Venusaur, and I don't know the exact number, you gotta forgive me for that, I do not know the exact number, but sleep powder goes up to roughly like 82, 83%, and now 75, it's not that good. Thir three quarters of a chance, that's a, you know, in my opinion, 25% is a, a large chance that something doesn't go in your favor. So having it be more like four fifths, an 80, 82, 83% chance, I'm willing to bet more of a game on a sleep powder. That being said, I'm also making sure that when I click Sleep Powder, it's not like, oh, I missed Sleep Powder, now the game's over, now I lose. I always put myself in a situation where I'm like, okay, I missed Sleep Powder, now I can either click it again, and I only need to hit one, which hitting one out of two Sleep Powders is like, oh my gosh, the odds of doing that are so high. You have such a high chance to hit one out of two. So putting yourself in a situation where you only need to hit one out of two sleep powders, I say there is nothing wrong with that. Click that sleep powder twice, you should almost always get that. But if you put yourself in a situation where you need to hit one sleep powder right then and there, not the best. I, I really would advise against it, because you never know when your Venusaur is just going to let you down. And you definitely don't want to bet the whole game on just your Venusaur letting you down once. Because trust me, like I said, I've been let down by Venusaur in very very crucial situations so I didn't get to explain that play there but we blast burn the goth to tell it's my strongest hit we're gonna be knocking it out and at the moment we have a speed boost on our Venusaur so we're gonna be out speeding their Venusaur guaranteed with the Sun up and the sludge bomb it looks like it should knock him out maybe it doesn't with the damage roll I'm not sure but they're they have revealed that they're holding the life orb item so they're definitely going down to my hit here and this is going to be an easy second game. A little harder than the first, but with some cool ally switch calling, we've been able to easily take both these games. I am loving this team. Honestly, it's a little, like, you know, I, I like I said, everybody hates Sun. But I feel like with smarter play and with actually reasoning through your, with your thought process and whatnot, you can transform Sun from an archetype that makes people really mad because you're just spamming sleep powder and going for dumb things and you're an archetype that allows you to click sleep powder doesn't require it and allows for better play such as bringing in the tyranitar you know clicking uh calling allies which is like that I, you know we haven't gotten to too many exact specifics here but you don't always have to click sleep powder to win and i know that's coming from a guy who clicked it three times to win that second game but like i said running the wider wider Wide lens item makes it a lot more reasonable. People won't be as mad if you're hitting wide lens sleep powders. Because like I said, it's 80%. That's like a stone edge, I think. Like, that's not that bad. I don't know. Anyways, that was the new team. What do you guys think? I'm really interested to hear. Because the first team, a little more hype. This one, a little more standard. I want to bring some standard stuff into the channel. We're going to be having our fun. But I also want to bring in some learning experiences with some more standard teams. So, let me know what you think of the new team in the comments. I'm... I'm pretty excited to play two more, at least, we, this might be a team we play with like three, four, or five episodes, because like, I'm loving it. I think this is going to be a great experience to show off some really high level play here. So that's going to be it for today. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe as it helps out the channel, and we will be back tomorrow with more Gen 1 starter action. See you later.